Hi everyone, in this video we're going to go over your Staphylococcus and Streptococcus. We're going to be looking at three different tests, your susceptibility tests, where we're looking at three different antibiotics, blood agar plate, where we're going to look at different types of hemolysis, and the last one we're going to use is our camp plate, which looks for synergistic effects between two different types of bacteria. Now with that said, let's get started. First up, we're going to look at your susceptibility tests and where we use bathotracin, novobiosin, and optocin. Now these antibacterials you guys should be using 5 microgram discs along with the pre-made blood agar discs. If you guys are using those 5 microgram discs then the zone of inhibition for the following antibiotic should be as follows. Bathotracin should be at least 10 millimeters Novobiosin should be 16 millimeters. And optocin should be 14 millimeters. Now with bacitracin, we're looking to inhibit the growth of our bacteria, of course. But what is the bacteria that we're actually inhibiting? The bacteria that we'll be inhibiting will be beta hemolytic group A streptococci. And it inhibits bacterial cell, cell wall synthesis. So the bacteria is no longer able to put up that protective layer and therefore dies off. Next, we have novobiosin. We're looking for the lack of growth, which would indicate a coagulase negative streptococci. And it does this by interfering with ATPase activity, thereby preventing the bacteria from producing any ATP. Now we look at optocin, which looks at streptococcus pneumoniae. And it also interferes with ATPase activity. Now at first this might get a bit confusing, but a little trick that I had for myself when I took this class was Bacitracin starts with a B, so that's your beta hemolytic group A streptococci. Novobiosin, there is going to be no coagulase streptococci. And optocin is the only one here that has a P, and that goes with pneumonia. So that's your streptococcus pneumonia. All of these were looking for some kind of streptococci. So, like I said, is that's just what we're for me, I hope that it helps you guys out. Um, if not, and you guys have something better, please feel free to let me know what works for you guys. Now when you do this experiment, it's just going to be three simple steps, all of which are going to be using aseptic technique. You're going to create your bacterial lawn, and I believe you're going to be using this with a Q-tip. Then you're going to place the discs. You're going to place two discs on opposite ends of the blood auger plate. It's simply going to be the use of the tongs where you have to dip it in the alcohol and flame it and then you're going to put both of them on. Then you'll incubate it, come back next lab and observe. So what I tried to draw here was the red being the blood auger and the yellow being the bacterial growth. As you can see here is that we have a solid break between the two lawns and that's what we want. We want two separate lawns and then we want to place the bacterial disc on opposite ends of the auger plate. Here you can see that there has been growth all the way up to the discs and probably even underneath it. Here we have a bit of a clearing where it's only the, the blood auger and there's no bacterial growth there. That's our zone of inhibition that we're going to measure. Moving on to the blood auger plate, which is used to test the hemolytic ability of gram-positive cocci. And we have three types, beta, alpha, and gamma. With beta hemolysis, 
That's the complete lysing of the red blood cells, where when you take that plate, you can see clearly right through it. It's going to be very, very distinct, almost clear when you look through it. Next up is alpha hemolysis, and that's going to be a partial hemolysis, and it's going to be evident by a kind of green color. And lastly, we have our gamma hemolysis, which is no hemolysis at all. And you're just going to have growth on the plate itself with no clearing at all of the blood. Now the question that seems to come up on every exam or on the test is, what kind of blood is this? So I want you guys to answer this question is, what kind of animal blood are we using in this lab? And the technique that you'll be using for this one is simply a streak plate. Now I've drawn the results down here, albeit very, very simplified. But just to drive the point home, we have our beta hemolytic group right here, with where you can see the bacteria growth in yellow and the complete clearing of the agar around that bacteria. Down here is where we're going to have our gamma, which we do have growth but there's no lysis of the red blood cells. And here we have our partial hemolysis, which is a small ring of hemolysis, but it, it's that green color that's typically associated with the alpha. And with your CAMP test, we're gonna be looking for the presence of Streptococcus agalactiae which is a type B strep. And we do this by seeing if it has a synergistic effect with Staphylococcus aureus. And the camp factor of the SA galactia, if it's present, will work synergistically with the beta hemolysins present in the S aureus. And this is all indicated by an arrowhead on the plate. Now this is roughly what your plate's going to look like where you have your cam plate here. You're going to first streak with your Staphylococcus aureus. Then you're going to use your second microbe to streak the second and third patterns. Making sure that the third pattern does come from the second but does not touch the first. You just want to get it kind of close there. Now if this second microbe is Streptococcus agalactiae, then it will form a synergistic effect with the Staphylococcus aureus to form that arrowhead that I was telling you guys about where it'll look something very similar to that. Now let's review. In your susceptibility test we went over different antibiotics. With bacitracin it interferes with bacterial cell wall. Novobiosin and optocin both interfere with ATPase activity. Looking at the blood auger plate, we had different hemolysis, beta, which is complete hemolysis, complete clearing of the plate, alpha, which is partial and is associated with a green color, and gamma, where we have bacterial growth, but there's no hemolysis of the red blood cells. And in our CAMP test, we're looking for a presence of an arrowhead, which means that Streptococcus agalactiae is the unknown bacteria because that is the only one that has a synergistic effect with Staphylococcus aureus. Now, I hope that this video was helpful for you guys, and if you have any questions, please feel free to send me an email, and I look forward to hearing from you guys.